Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and today on the channel we're going to be featuring one of the brand new hidden ability starter Pokemon that we just had access to. If you uh, are a little bit confused about uh, the hidden ability Pokemon, don't know anything about them, or want to know how to get them in game, then there will be a little eye in the corner up here. Just click on that, it'll take you over to a little guide that I did the other day, um, telling you how to get these Pokemon. So we've got Cinderace with Libero, uh, we got the Inteleon with Sniper, and we got Rillaboom finally with Grassy Surge. Now today's team is going to be centered around the Cinderace. You can see it on your, your screen right now. Um, I came up with this the evening of this uh, the, the starters being released. I thought, yeah, it would be great to have something Aqua Jet in, into Cinderace, and then proc the weakness policy. Um, unfortunately, it's taken me a little bit of time to get the team ready, test it out, and then get it ready to upload for you guys to see. But as always, there will be a rental code of this team at the end of the, the, the episode, so stick around for that, and you can try it out. There'll also be a poker pace down in the description below for you guys to try out on Showdown or anything like that if you try. Got a supporting cast of obviously the um, the Aqua Jet user is going to be Primarina. Uh, we've got Grimstar there with the ah Grimstar's got the wrong item, so we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back and with the correct item on Grimstar, for some reason I traded an item uh, with it. It's obviously got the Roselli Berry. It absorbs those fairy type attacks a little bit better. We got Drampa there. Main reason I got Drampa in. It's the only Pokemon we've got in the format at the minute that has access to Cloud Nine, which negates the effects of weather. It just gives. Cinderace a little bit of a helping hand against opposing weather teams things like Venusaur in the sun things like Excadrill in the sand and rain in general it doesn't like facing so with Dramper it means we can nullify the weather effect and we can kind of operate the team how we want to then we got Excadrill there Mold Breaker and then our own Rotom um, Mole which is our final Pokemon of the team so without further ado my friends let's hop into it I hope you're all well keeping well enjoying all of the updates that we got the other day we got a mad day of updates on tuesday we got all the information about the dlcs well not all of the information but a bunch of information about the dlcs uh it was really exciting to see that trailer get the announced date and everything like that so uh exciting times only a, a, a week and a bit to go now before the dlcs are released uh the isla armor I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. We'll be doing some more uh, updates on that as we go. But we got our first opponent of the episode, so I'm going to be playing Dicey. And they are, they've also got a Drampa. Who would have thought? Uh, so Drampa, Incineroar, Conquer the, the Alcremy, mm, Lapras, and Dusk. Clops. Hmm. So it's a kind of standard looking Lapras team, ex with the exception of the Drampa there. Um, now, against Lapras with this team, I really need to kind of prioritize getting damage onto the Lapras early on and then have like the Cinderace in the back um, with something like Primarina. So uh, the Alchemy is a little bit of a pain, uh, honestly, to deal with because um, I think it, it kind of forces me to lead Grimmsnarl and uh, Rotom to have the fake out onto the Alchemy uh, taunt there as well to stop that. So I, I think I'm kind of forced my hand into going Grimmsnarl, Rotom. Hmm. Excadrill would be nice. Excadrill would be nice here, but we're not going to go with it. We're going to go Primarina and we're going to go Cinderace in the back and we're going to lock in and see how we get on. Now, in my testing with this team, Lapras teams seem to be the kind of ones that were the most difficult to play against um so i've tried my best i think it's more to do with how you lead against them obviously with this specific team than anything else and the big thing is to you've got to stall out the 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 g max turns if you can as best you can and then obviously the auroraville as well stall that out as best you can um and then kind of go from there now i think we have to like come to the the conclusion that we're going to lose rotom this first turn to uh, um Uh, G Max Resonance, but if we can get some just big damage off onto Lapras here, um, then that that's that's the main thing. So I'm gonna go for a Leaf Storm. It is our biggest damaging attack. Uh, ooh, we're not actually gonna see. Huh? Wow, have they just misclicked? Wow. Well, that's that makes things so much easier. Uh, we do get the special defense drop, uh, special attack drop, proc weakness policy. Now, this isn't the worst. Like, honestly, 
Um, I'll grab me does flinch. Obviously, freeze dry kind of come out. Probably pick up the knockout anyway. We might actually take it. Oh, no. No, not with, not after the weakness policy. What am I talking about? We might take it. <laughs> okay. Um, now do we bring in Cinderace or do we bring in Primarina? <sighs> Can we? Hmm. Probably better off bringing in Cinderace. Go for a G Max Fireball. Get the sun up. Taunt that Alchemy. Um. Yeah, because we should be able to get the Lapras in a couple, at least a couple of uh, a couple of turns. So speed doesn't matter so much against this team because primarily their speed control is gonna be um, Trick Room. Rather than any sort of speed boosting, uh, didn't really have too much of that in team preview. So uh, we will taunt the Alchemy. We want to stop that decorate for sure. Uh, thing that worries me a little bit is the Lapras obviously has got um, its weakness policy proc, which makes it a lot more threatening here. Um, but if we're going to lose anything with the remaining point one that we've got, I'd rather lose Cinderace than lose the Primarina, like in all honesty. Um, and I don't think an Iron Head, like we need the stab, like I'm going to get stab move, whatever, but I think Pyro Ball is probably a stronger attack here, so we're not going to see it, uh, G-Max again, which is kind of, it's kind of strange, uh, they must be going for a different sort of strategy here, uh, unless their G-Max button is, um, just broken, so we do get the sun up, we do take down the Lapras, which I'm like still surprised about. I don't know how. Okay, we're going to see Charm coming out from the Alchemy. So that's a nice option. And you normally see the Decorate there. Uh, but the Taunt completely shutting it down. Um, What's going to come in? Drampa. Okay, it's going to nullify the effects of the Sun. Which is fine. Because we can pretty much double into the Drampa now. Um, is it worth going for an Airstream? Or is it worth going after the Alchemy? Hmm. I think we got Airstream here. Like I say, it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, it would be nice if we had Primarina on the board so we could proc our own weakness policy. But maybe the Drampa does that for us. Who knows? Let's see. Um, but the Spirit Break is going to be useful onto the Drampa for sure. As we do see it. Dynamax. It's the first Dynamax Drampa I've come across. Still think probably would have been better off going for the Lapras, but I might that might come back to bite me in uh, <laughs> really hard. So we'll get this um, G Max Airstream off. I'm gonna be doing too much damage. See, I don't really feel like the Steel Spike's gonna really benefit us too much. Uh, maybe it will um, against something like Concordia, which could potentially be in the back. Um, and I guess the other thing that we've got to worry about is. Um, Airstream from the Oppos and Drampa. So, is it Berserk? Is it Berserk? We do get some nice data. It is Berserk. Of course it's Berserk. It's probably got Life Orb as well. Max Strike. Yeah, so our uh, Airstream was useful because oof, it does so much damage, doesn't it? It really does. Um, I think a Spirit Break probably takes it down from this range, especially if it is Life Orb. Oh, it's not shown a Life Orb. Hmm. Do we take this opportunity to get rid of Alchemy? Like, I'm not too worried about Alchemy, honestly. Um, I think we just double the Dramper again. But this time we go Max Flare into it. We'll get a bit more power. Yeah. So let's see. It should be enough to put it in range for a Spirit Break. Um, and it just means that we're not going to take too much damage from the, um, the Dazzling Gleam when it comes out from the Alchemy. It just means we take it a little bit better. Obviously, Grimstar going to be able to manage that quite comfortably. Uh, Spirit Break coming out, taking the Dramper down. And uh, this game is just confusing me completely. We do get rid of the Dynamax. And you've got to imagine that it's probably Conk is the, the last Pokemon, which I don't mind too much. The Taunt does shirk off on the Alchemy, so we've got to keep that in mind for our next turn. Probably want to Taunt that before Grimstar goes down. Uh, oh, it's Incineroar. Hmm, okay. 
Well, that makes things a lot more straightforward. Um, because we could just pyro ball into the alchemy. Like Incineroar is likely going to fake something out, but it's more likely that it goes fake out into Grimmsnarl. Um, and anything. So I'm just going to taunt and I'm going to go pyro ball into the alchemy, double into that slot. Because you can only fake out one thing and at least, you know, what doesn't get faked out is going to get some kind of, yeah. We'll get the taunt off so we can stop the support from this alchemy, which is the main thing there. And with Primarina in the back, I think we're pretty safe. Um, just gone for another Dazzling Gleam. Oh, Cinderace just hanging on, just hanging on. Okay, well, that's not the, the worst thing in the world. I think we've only got a, maybe a turn left of Sun as well, which is useful. Uh, it'll just make taking the Incineroar down a little bit easier. Now a Pyro Ball should be able to take down the um, the Alchemy. We'll just go for a Hyper Voice. We can't Aqua Jet because we'll just knock ourselves out. I mean, we could potentially, we could just Iron Head as well. Um, it's a bit safer. And then we'll turn ourselves into that Tasty Steel type. Um, yeah, because there's always a chance that Pyro Ball can miss. It's, uh, it's not, wow, okay. That's nowhere near enough damage. Nowhere near enough. What's this Incineroar going to do? What's it got in store for us? I mean, as crazy as this match has been, it's still coming pretty... It's getting pretty close, isn't it? Uh, parting shot. Not really ideal. Not what we want to see. But I think... <laughs> a Moonblast will take down the Alchemy. The sun fades and then... Uh, we got Hydra Cannon, which should be able to take down the Incineroar. The Incineroar, if that's its only way to damage us, I think we're going to be alright. So, uh, doesn't gleam. Shouldn't be doing too much to Prim. It is taunted, so we'll, we should be able to get rid of it this turn. And then hopefully we're going to be on a decent amount of health. So we should be able to uh, clean, clean this one up and maybe get a get a win. Oh, that's not, not ideal, is it? Not ideal. Mystical Fire. Mystical Fire and Snarl. I'm still confident a Moonblast will take it down from this range. Yep. Okay. Right, well, we can just hyper voice ourselves like our way to victory here. Parting shots coming out over and over. That puts us down at minus, minus three, I think, which isn't ideal, but <laughs> we're sitting in not a bad position. So we can hyper voice. Let's see how much this does. Single target, remember, as well. And we've also got Hydro Cannon if we need it at the very end, but I don't think the Incineroar is going to be able to out damage us even with all these drops, to be honest. But we will soon find out, my friends. We will soon find out. Um, I'd love to hear as well, if you guys have been trying out the new hidden ability starter Pokemon in your own teams, I'd love to hear how you've been getting on certain builds that you've been using and uh, what you think of them in general. I think they've all got uh, a very good place in the format at the minute, whether it be a fun team or whether it be a serious team. I think some of them have got potential to be very good Pokemon in, um, in all areas of the format right now um for di different reasons obviously the the sniper and teleon interests me a lot i think uh, i've got a team ready to go with that so we'll have that featured very soon i've also got a rillaboom team as well very fun rillaboom team which uh, i uh, i hope you're all going to enjoy as well as this cinderace one um there's a berry there's the berry darkest lariat let's see what the damage is like here Oh, that was a crit. Okay. Well, we don't need any more of those. Okay. We don't need any more crits. Like, let's let's just say goodbye to the crits. We uh, we just want one more after this should be enough to take down the Incineroar. <laughs> and if it hangs on, we still got Aqua Jet. Let's see. What's this Darkest Lariat doing? Yeah, that, that's more like it. Okay. Well, we can't afford another crit. So... Well, we probably can. We can probably scrape by with a crit. A Hyper Voice just missing the knockout here. Although I feel pretty confident we'll get it from this range, from the damage that we've been doing. Poor Primarina struggling right at the end. Um, yeah, and where were we? Talking about Rillaboom as well. Rillaboom, obviously very interesting with the grassy terrain. One of the few Pokemon now that we've got access to with the terrain. Um, so lots of things you can do to play around with it. There's plenty of unburdened Pokemon in this format that you can uh, utilize maybe the grassy seed with. We've already seen players using Drift Blim with it. Uh, Halucha is another option, obviously, that can cause a lot of havoc to teams. 
um, and just the generally the the defense boost obviously not just for boosting and burden and Pokemon like that but boosting your own defense on things that are maybe a, a little weaker on the defensive side that's also got a utility there as well which is really nice so we do pick up a win so good game to my first opponent here and uh, we will swiftly move on to our second match and hopefully we can uh, get a repeat result maybe play a different variant so we've got an next opponent uh, Mimikyu Toxicity, Chandelier, Glaceon, Concorder, and the Ndidi. So, what are we looking at here? Probably more Trick Room orientated. You've got the Ndidi support there. Um, Mimikyu, Chandelier are going to be Trick Room Pokemon. Um, Toxicity could potentially be the, the max Pokemon. Um, okay. What are we going to do? I think Grimmsnarl. Uh... Problem is with Grimmsnarl here is uh, the Indeedee makes it very difficult for us to um, to make use of the Taunt or the Fake Out or anything like that. So that's why it's super difficult. Maybe Cinderace Primarina is not a bad start because then at least we can we've got a spread move to break the disguise on the Mimic if you see that come out first. Um, I am going to bring Excadrill and if the Trick Room goes up, well we're pretty knackered to be honest, but. I think Grimmsnarl might be alright. Um, because it it does help out against things like Conk. Um, is it going to be that useful though, really? Hmm. Helps out against Conkledur, but that's about it. Uh, we're going to have to just lock in. I think it's probably the better option. Maybe Excadrill there would have been good, but... It's difficult when you can't see a way around stopping the trick room. It does make it very difficult. Right, we've got Indeed Mimikyu coming out for my opponent. Right, let's see. Um, hmm. I mean, we're probably going to see Follow Me, Trick Room. Uh, so it, it doesn't feel like there's much point in going for the Airstream. Maybe Steel Spikes is better. And I don't know if we want to proc our Weakness Policy just yet. I think it'd be more beneficial to get the Hyper Voice up. Um, and especially if the trick room goes up, I think one of the things that you've got to keep in mind is do we want to remove Ndidi from the field straight away and allow my opponent the opportunity to bring in um, a trick room sweeper? Um, we're probably better off just uh, kind of letting the Ndidi stick around on the field because really it doesn't do too, too much, does it? Um, it's redirecting. Well, it's not even redirecting here, is it? It's um, it's not even helping handing, which is kind of weird. But most of the time, it's just normally there to support. It can throw out attacks, of course, but um, it's not as threatening as something like Rhyperia or something like that. You know, I know my opponent hasn't got that, but you, along those same lines, and the indeed he just hangs on. So we are going to see Hyper Voice, huh? Uh, thankfully, we're steel type, so we kind of resist that. And there's a trick room. Okay. So this next turn, we can go Aqua Jet. Uh, uh, do we want to go Aqua Jet? I don't think we do. I think we go Steel Spike into Mimikyu again. And I think we go for another Hyper Voice. And the thing with going for the Hyper Voice is, like my opponent has been a steel type. Uh, you probably want to get Chandelure onto the field as soon as possible. Um, but it makes it difficult bringing Chandler onto the field right now um, just because of the, the cover that we've got from Primarina. Um, and there's no like urgency for us to go for proccing the um, the weakness policy just yet. There's a Mystical Fire coming out from the Ndidi. Uh, Play Rough coming out as well. Going to double up into the Primarina, but that's fine. The defense boost really helping us out there as we get that Hyper Voice. going to do enough to take down the Ndidi and chip the Mimikyu, probably to the point where we're going to be able to pick up the knockout now with Cinderace. So, uh, the Steel Spikes coming out. 
and picks up the knockout, which is great. So we get another defense boost on both Pokemon. And I think that's one of the, the big things about Cinderace, being able to have access to that, that Iron Head. It makes it so strong. Um, like it's one of the better uh, the Dynamax moves, obviously with the defense boost that you get. Obviously you're gonna put that in, in the same rank as like uh, Airstream and um, the, the, the ground one. Okay. Ah, toxicity and Conkle there. Hmm. Okay, so this is a little bit awkward. But I mean, it is it really? Is it really? Uh, it is awkward for the fact that I want to airstream the Conkle there right now. Um, but toxicity would threaten us otherwise. I mean, what we could do is just Aqua Jet, Cinderace, and go for the airstream. I think that's probably the best thing. We might lose Primarina right now to. Um, Toxicity, but yeah, Conk. Conk should go down to a plus two, and we are plus two defense, remember, as well. So, against a Conkledo, it's we're not in the worst spot. They do max. There's the Aqua Jet. As long as Cinderace can get through this turn, which it should do, there's a max knuckle. Be super effective, but like I say, we've got the defense boost, which is definitely, definitely going to help us out here. Toxicity should move next. So it's not like we're a flying type now. If it goes for poison type attack for some reason, which I don't think it will. Um, and we might be able to take an attack with Primarina because um, we are Solfest. <sighs> yeah, we just about take it. And there's the airstream. Okay, turn to that flying type. So stab plus two. Is it going to be enough? It should be enough to get the conk. I think it will. So close. It's so close. Okay, so now we need to wait out these um, these Dynamax turns. Just gonna make it a bit more difficult. Oh, it's, it's got the burn as well, so that doesn't help it. Uh, we could actually Aqua Jet at this next turn, um, and then hope that's enough with the burn to to kind of get rid of it. So I'm going. Oh, what have we got in the back? Oh, we got <laughs> we got Excadrill. We're fine. We're fine. Um, I think I am just going to Aqua Jet it because I think that plus the burn plus another turn be enough to get the conk. Uh, the protect here is not great, but if they predict like an ice type attack into us. Oh, the psychic train. We always forget. Always forget about that. Yeah, we're going to lose Cinderace now. Oh, from Marina. Okay. Psychic terrain, always forgetting. Right, we need to stall out these trick room turns. Can't be that many turns left. I think this might be it over now. This could be the last turn of trick room, is it? These burn, this burn is not doing enough. Um, no, it's not. There is going to be one more turn of trick room. Uh, I think we bring Grimmsnarl because we've got the Sash on Excadrill. So at the very worst, we can leave Excadrill right till the very end, and then bring it in. Actually, it might have been better to bring it in while the psychic train. Yeah, so we've got one turn. Hmm. I mean, you can only target one Pokemon here, right? So I think we just yeah, we just Iron Head Conk, and I think we just Spirit Break it as well. Max Knuckling the Grim Snarl. Who Cinderace? I think you should have. I think they should have max knuckled the the Grim Snarl. Um, because I think you needed to max knuckle that and then go for Overdrive, which would have got the Cinderace anyway. That would have been the better play. But see, hopefully we take. Wow. Oh. Oh, that was too close. Too close for comfort. <laughs> wow. Okay. And then we got the Excadrill to come in, and that should finish things up. The dimensions turn back to normal, so we managed to get through it. Uh, all right. Even though I did forget about the um, psychic terrain, just for a minute. It's the, it's the terrains in this game. You know, when you look back at the the last like Sun and Moon's uh, seventh generation, uh, sixth generation, seventh. It is the seventh generation, yeah. No, sixth generation. Um, the terrains are so obvious, but they're very, very subtle in this in this generation. So 
never mind. Anyway, we pick up a win, so that is excellent. That's a nice way for us to end the episode, and I hope you guys have enjoyed the games today. We've seen a lot from Cinderace, and I think that last one particularly, we saw how good it can be, even in a really awkward environment of the trick room like we saw there. So um, as promised, we'll, uh, we'll hop over now and we'll do the rental team for you guys. There we go, my friends. There is the rental team for you guys to try out and have a lot of fun with. As always, if you do, please let me know down in the comment section what your thoughts are on the team and if you've got your own build variants around this. Uh, the team is very fun. Uh, I ladded up to top 500 with it i probably could have pushed a bit further with it but uh, i was testing other things and building other things in preparation for the next couple of weeks on the channel so i hope you appreciate that if you do have some success with it let me know and i would love to see but that is going to be about it for today's episode thanks as always for tuning in my friends make sure you're all taking care of yourselves staying safe and being kind to one another and i will see you all for another episode of our vgc 2020 battle series very soon my name's Osiris and I'll uh, just um, I guess I'm saying goodbye so till next time bye bye